very obviously, we're going to have a new president here in the U.S. and Donald Trump. Uh, and he has his own agenda when it comes to his technology platform. How does the technology industry manage throughout 2017 with so much uncertainty as to their bottom line in light of uh, what's about to happen? We were talking a little bit about kind of encryption as an option. I mean, you know, going forward, is it the kind of thing where, you know, these major technology companies need to take uh, this this heavier kind of approach to uh, protecting their users and protecting their data from an optional thing to a mandatory thing and make a statement there? What do you think, Ian? Well, 2017 is going to be the crux year for this because, as you say, we have a, a, a new a new president, in, uh, president coming in who has made it very clear that he does not side with technology companies when it comes to encryption, does not have a great belief in personal privacy from anyone other than himself. Uh, and those that, than those that he, he works with. So this is going to be a crux year. Do the technology companies step up to the plate and actually act on their customers' behalf? Or do they roll over and let Trump tickle their belly in exchange for you know being left alone by the Justice Department? I suspect the latter will be the case. Uh, and as such, consumers start to need, need to start thinking now about the choices they make. Do they, for example, use Dropbox, which is pretty much, or, or any of the commercial cloud services, uh, which don't allow for end-to-end -end encryption because it's convenient, or do they go for ones which do because they want their privacy? Uh, and the only way that companies are going to be forced to make a decision on this is by which way their customers jump and which way the government jumps. Now, the government has made its position totally clear. They want a backdoor in encryption. They want access to users' data. Now, if enough customers move away from those platforms that play ball, then tech companies might grow a pair. But quite frankly, I'm not hopeful. I do think at the end of the day, Money will win out and they'd rather do business than protect their, you know, do business with the government to protect their shareholder value rather than protect their customers data. Sorry to be a bit of a down on that one. But, you <laughs> know, I mean, in some lot. sense, like all the watchdogging we've done, all of the like it's a slippery slope. Every time we've said that, like now this is the time, right? I mean, this is the time that we, we're about to hand over the most sophisticated surveillance um, you know, operation right. the world has ever known. And we're handing it over to a, a new person and a new person who believes in the, the stop and frisk, the, you know, just a national stop and frisk policy that's out in the open. And what is he going to do? What, not out in the open in these machines that we don't understand. I think we have the right to be frightened, but I mean, should we all start like using the Tor browser? Uh, you certainly should be using the Tor browser wherever possible. Um, look, I mean, it's, we have the, you know, we have, we know what the Oompa Loompa president is going to be putting out there. Uh, he, he, he's said very clearly he wants access to this sort of data. Technology companies, I don't think are, are, are going to be, are, are going to stand up against him. If you saw the fight that Apple had, and that's with, with with the San Bernardino case, Obama very publicly stood on the fence on that one. He refused to put his weight on either side of the debate and let law enforcement and Apple work it out amongst themselves. Trump will not do that. Trump will actually get involved and put pressure on uh, put pressure on companies to do this sort of thing, and I suspect uh, on individuals who displease him. Uh, let's face it, the guy does have a bit of a record when it comes to being vengeful. So yeah, this is this is basically 2017 is when we're going to set the tone for the next four or eight years in terms of how governments and technology companies and consumers work to you know, interact with each other. Um, if enough people, I mean, we you talk about a watchdog. If enough people take action on this one, then the government will listen. Then technology companies will listen. It all depends on getting people to take action and. I don't have a lot of confidence in that happening. I, I wish I could. I really wish I could. But the fact of the matter is that an awful lot of people just don't care that much about it. And they're willing to sacrifice, you know, their their, their personal privacy and their personal liberty for the, the feeling of being secure, even if they're not. Well, I, I personally think this is not the time to curl up into a little ball and um, cry in no, the corner. No, this is the time to fight. <laughs> yes. It's, the Sometimes time to, I want to curl up into a little ball and, and cry <laughs> in the corner. Just you saying. can do that, then get up and, you know, fight for what you believe in um, and, you know, yeah. write your congressperson, you know, do all the things. Um, go on Facebook not to look at puppy photos, but to just see how other people are taking action. I mean, that's there. Right. Um, and, yeah, I, th I think this is the time to really say, like, to stand up for, for what we've been talking about and what we believe in. Um, and I think I I'm optimistic. Yeah, I mean, in the words of Joe Hill, don't mourn, organize. You know, it's we've got to get organized about this and we've got to get serious about it because 
these are these are decisions that we're going to make in the next year or so, which are going to affect our children and our children's children unless yeah. we're really smart about it. So it's not just about us; it's about future generations. We have a responsibility to get this right, and that's going to mean hard work. It's going to mean a lot of pain and heartbreak, but it's got to be done. 